people say China's bad because China manipulates the currency. We haven't heard this in a while, but they used to say this. So we need a trade war with China. We need to penalize the American people because China has manipulates its currency. Really? Really? I, I remember saying this on Fox once. Uh, they asked me the question on, on a Neil Cavuto show on Fox. Well, but China manipulates its currency. And I said, are you, are you guys hearing yourself? What does the Federal Reserve do when it lowers interest rates to zero, when we've had zero interest rates for the last almost 10 years? That's not manipulating our currency? Didn't Trump at some point said the dollar was too high and we should do something about it? Haven't presidents after presidents, treasury secretary after treasury secretary, Federal Reserve chiefs after Federal Reserve chiefs try to manipulate the dollar, make it more expensive or less expensive for benefit or harm of trade? All the time. It happens all the time. Since we went off the gold standard, we've done nothing but manipulate our currency. There's nothing unique about what China does. Every country out there, what's the European Union been doing if not manipulating the value of the euro? What is the Swiss central bank? It's dramatically tried to manipulate the value of the Swiss franc when it got so high that they were worried that it would be too expensive. So they started selling Swiss francs to lower the value. Yeah, Daniel's absolutely right. Trump and Sanders on these kind of issues are very much alike, very much alike. And when you dig deep into it, you'll discover that Trump and Sanders are alike on things like immigration as well. Sanders is very anti-immigration. <laughs> Somebody says Trump doesn't think words are important. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's a, 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 a certifiable idiot. Well, only thing that's important, my, my friends, are words, ideas, and the actions that follow from them. All right, so, and I don't think that's true. I think Trump thinks words are very important. He spends a lot of thought and time on his tweets. He is a complete and utter pragmatist. He doesn't think principles are important. He thinks he can be pro-tariffs today, and I won't be surprised if a year from now he's anti-tariffs. I, I would be because he's been fairly consistently anti-free trade, pro-tariffs since the 1980s. So he is anti-principles. He is the ultimate, the most pragmatic president the United States has ever, ever had. And it really is horrific, horrific to watch. Um, so let's say, so they manipulate the currency. So do we. Who cares? I mean, and in fact, is China has, for the last few years, mostly tried to strengthen its currency, which would actually hurt its exports rather than weaken it, rather than weaken it. If, if they actually freed up their currency for the market to determine its value, the currency would plummet, which is what everybody accuses them of manipulating it down. No, they're manipulating it up to, to, be more, to be stronger, which is not good for them exporting. So everybody gets this wrong. Again, another topic that everybody on the financial news in, in politics, in everybody gets this wrong, and it's, again, so damn simple. Subsidies. Well, the Chinese subsidize, and that's not fair. Isn't it? I mean, I think it's bad that they subsidize. Who pays those subsidies? Well, Chinese taxpayers and Chinese consumers who pay for it through inflation, maybe. Who else pays for the subsidies? Well, Chinese competitors to the, favor, to, to the favored Chinese companies who get the subsidies versus the companies who don't. The Chinese suffer dramatically from these subsidies. Do we? Well, for the most part, no. We actually benefit enormously from the subsidies. We get cheap stuff. Now, 
Long term, I think subsidies are bad for everybody. It's lose, 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 right? Just like free trade is win, 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 win. Everybody wins long term. Obviously, they're losers short term in a sense of people losing their jobs, company going out of business. But in the long run, run it's all win, win. The same with subsidies. And the same with Chinese tariffs. There's no question. Chinese tariffs, everybody loses as a consequence. If China didn't have tariffs, if China didn't have subsidies, we would all be long-term better off. But we don't control China. China has subsidies. And the fact is that in the short term, for the most part, we benefit from those subsidies because we get cheaper goods at the expense of Chinese taxpayers. Now, it's true that some American companies can't compete. So they shift and produce something. They can compete. But people say, but we lose American jobs. Do we? First of all, there's no such thing as American jobs. There's your job and my job and individuals' jobs, company jobs. Have we lost jobs in America? I don't know. Trump keeps telling us we're at the lowest unemployment rate in American history, at least in modern American history. 3.6%. Unthinkable. So who have we lost jobs to? Everybody, it seems, in America who wants to work is finding work. Companies are going out of business. Have you seen the stock market recently? It's through the roof. And profit margins are fairly healthy. So... Who exactly is suffering? Well, some businesses go to business, yes. Some businesses do. And they focus on stuff that they can compete in. And yet, there's obviously lots of business in the United States. There's obviously lots of stuff being produced in the United States. You know that the United States produces more manufacturing goods today than ever in all of American history. Manufacturing stuff. These manufacturing jobs we've lost. Yes, we produce it with half the people. But we produce much, much more stuff than we ever did before. So what jobs have we lost? Jobs that your grandparents had? But that's what happens in a dynamic economy. And that's certainly what happens when emerging markets come online. And, you know, if it's not China, it's going to be Vietnam. And if it's not Vietnam, it'll be Rwanda. If it's not Rwanda, it'll be Nigeria. It'll be some country out there that wants to develop that's going to create products, build products cheaper than we can in the United States. Good for them. That's how they become rich. And as they become rich, we become richer. Because again, it's win-win. That's what trade is. Ooh, we are told, but we have this huge trade imbalance. Really? Why do we care? Why is trade imbalance a bad thing in and of itself? We make money doing all kinds of stuff, but not through export. We take that money and we buy goods from the Chinese, let's say. They get our pieces of paper, call them dollars. We get their stuff that they have invested heavily to produce. Who's better off? The guy with the pieces of paper or the guy with the stuff? Whoop. Well, it was a trade. So when I bought something from some Chinese guy, I got something that I valued more than my pieces of paper. And he got something that he valued more than the stuff he produced. We're both better off. There are no losers here. Who lost? Who lost? Nobody loses. Trade is win-win. Now you say, well, what happened to Detroit? Well, I mean, why is America manufacturing cars? For why does GM and Chrysler and Ford still exist? I don't understand it. The only thing... GM, Chrysler, and Ford are good at producing are pickup trucks and SUVs. Why do they produce anything else? Because they're being, they've been propped up by the American government. 
They mean subsidized by the American public. Oh, I thought only Chinese subsidize. No, it turns out we subsidize as well. Then why are we so, so adamant about them stopping subsidize if we won't subs stop our subsidies? But why hasn't American auto industry died a long time ago? And those workers retrained to do something actually productive instead of build loser cars that nobody wants to buy. That wouldn't exist if not for American government subsidies and bailouts. Everybody talks about the bank bailouts. What about the auto work bailouts? But why does America have to have an auto industry? I mean, German cars are great. Korean cars are excellent. Japanese cars are wonderful. And one day, I'm sure, Chinese cars will be excellent. Why not buy our cars from overseas? I don't grow my food. I go to the grocery store and buy it from them. They specialize in groceries. And you know what? I have a massive trade deficit with my grocery store. Massive. They never hire me to come and give a speech. They don't listen to the podcast. They don't support the show on my website. And I, I give them all this money, all this money, and they never buy anything from me. It's awful. Now, it's worse in this case because the Chinese actually do buy stuff from us. They buy some stuff they import from us, not that much. But the rest of the money, all those dollars, flow right back to the United States. They make investments here. They buy our real estate. They buy companies. They buy, I don't know, buildings. And they buy, on a massive scale, U.S. government bonds. So every dollar that we use you know, to buy stuff from the Chinese, we as individuals, comes back to the United States in form of bond purchases, the lower interest rates that make it easier for us to borrow money here in the U.S. Right? Somebody says, instead of making utilitarian arguments against tariff, they're correct, I think it's much more effective to make moral arguments. You have to make both. You have to make both. You have to make the economic argument. I don't consider them a utilitarian argument. The economic argument. You have to explain to people how economics works. And what is morality? Morality is leaving you individual choice. And I mentioned this. To buy what you want to buy, when you want to buy it, how you want to buy it, from whomever you want to buy it, wherever they happen to live, at the price you can negotiate with them without a middleman taxing it arbitrarily. Just because they don't like who you've bought it from because they live in a different country. That's the moral argument which I've made over and over again. But that's, you have to also make the economic arguments. People have to understand how economic works, how the economy works. They have to integrate both. Morality is not floating. Morality is practical. You have to show them how it works, how it actually benefits them. There's no point in making economic arguments without the moral argument. But there's also no point in making the moral argument without the practical argument, which is deep down at the end of the day, the moral argument. The moral is the practical. The practical is the moral. But the moral argument, I've said it. I've said it over and over again. I should have the freedom to choose who to buy from, no matter where they live, at a price I negotiate. I don't need Trump to negotiate for me. I don't need Trump to tax me because he doesn't like who I'm buying from. It's immoral for him to do so. The role of government, the role of government is not to take care of me. The role of government is not to dictate who I should buy, what I should make, how I should live. The role of government is to protect me, protect my rights. Not to protect the rights of the Chinese. That's why if the Chinese people are being stolen from in order to subsidize their businesses, it's not the job of the American government to protect the Chinese from tariffs. The role of the U.S. government is to protect me from the Chinese using guns against me, protect me from other Americans using guns against me. And the Supreme Court 
And the Constitution is there to protect me from the federal government, tax, you know, imposing itself on my life. Trump is violating my rights by imposing tariffs on me. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes.